Hey all just going to record a little video here. So often I get asked on how to prime, how I prime my minis and get them ready for painting. So here I'm just going to do a little demonstration. So I got my manky uh, palette at the moment, which does need a cleaning. Normally it is pristine, but uh, alas, both sides have been heavily used. So this, I'll have to use a scraper on them later. So ignoring that, firstly I like to use War Painter's Brush on Primer. Because I predominantly travel with my painting setup, I can't really afford to carry a rattle can or use a bring an airbrush with me. Although lately there has been some advances in portable airbrush brushes, but I don't think they're, it's at that stage where I'd invest in one just yet. So nice and easy, a little bottle of brush on primer goes right into the carry case and nice and easy to use. So iPainter has recently installed um, some ball bearings in each of its bottle, as you can see here, some mixing balls included. And with just a little shake, I can then decant some of this paint onto the palette. And it's a nice dark gray. So you'll start off. I've got this miniature here, a little World of Warcraft-esque uh, dwarf with a blunderbuss and a blade attachment on the bottom. Very cool. So I will now, using a battered brush, you can use a nice brush if you want, but I think if you just use anything to a dry brushing standard of brush, you'd be more than fine. And I'll just proceed to slop it on all over the miniature and try and give it a nice good coverage all around. The only problem here is that the miniature is, a nice, is pretty much the same color as the primer, so I will have to pay a little bit more attention to see if it's not the miniature or the differentiate between the miniature and the primer itself. Let's go, just a nice big courage. If it pools in any one area, just keep brushing it around. You can almost use it as a small reservoir of primer. So rather than going to the palette, you can just dig it up from one of the reservoirs, like here at the neck and at the armpit. Make sure to get into all the nooks and crannies so you don't have to come back to it later. Now normally as well, I'd have this miniature on some sort of base so I can easily handle it, but alas, it looks like I'm gonna have to get my fingers a bit primed up this time. And then, so this miniature was kindly given to me by a good friend Alan from the Dragon Forge. Uh, one of its one of his spare ones, little tasters he was handing out one day at the Adventures League. But I, I'm gonna get around to painting because I do like my dwarfs and I do like this miniature in particular. So there you go. So that would be the first stage of just using the Yami Painter Primer on the miniature. Um, if it does look a bit gloopy and like it's covering up too much detail, it will settle down a bit. So if it looks horrendous here, it won't be as bad later on. So earlier today, here's the one I made earlier, folks. Here's a base I, I primed up using the Army Painter Primer. There's still one or two patches where the primer hasn't covered due to... Um, the releasing agent that you find on TT Combat miniatures, but that's okay. It can be painted over, and like let's say, a little dry brush here. Why not? So the next stage of my priming, I like to do after a coat of primer has been completed. And I'm just going to rinse off the brush here and give it a little wipe on some paper towel. Is to go for just a lighter grey, and I'm going to dry brush this over. So this is the Ami Painter Spaceship exterior. So again, a little bit of a shake. I think this is quite an old pot, so it might be a little bit difficult to actually get some out. Ooh. So I may, oh, there we go, bit of life. And just a bit more, because it is a large base. It's a 50 mil base from TT Combat. It's their cobblestone streets that used for Can Valley. Although I love using these bases for D&D, &D, because of course there's lots of city settings, especially recently that we've been running Keys to the Golden Vault and Candlekeep and the Dragon Heist. 
So now I'm just going to lightly brush over this base with this lighter grey to give it some contrast. And also I think dry brushing will give it some a little bit of extra texture, a bit more weathering in the final product. So there we go, just catching those edges. That's a bit of a bad pooling by there, but we can just ignore that because there's going to be a couple more stages to the painting process and we can cover up any little mistakes here. And even if they go into like like a big glob goes into a, one of the crevices, uh, we will be applying, or well, I typically apply some inks that will darken down those recesses so it will get rid of that pooling. There we go. Go back to the palette there. Bit more of a dry brush. So of course when you first get a new application of the paint you do have to be careful because there will be more pigment and there will be more chance of pooling. So there you go and then as as the paint dries a bit more and more comes off the brush you can be a bit more aggressive with the dry brushing. So there you go. So we've got a dark grey and a lighter grey now. And finishing off the final bit is some pure matte white. And again, just a little shake. And hopefully this comes out a bit smoother. There you go, not too bad. Don't need as much as well. So while I let that lighter grey dry, I will now bring out what I did earlier. So this is what the spaceship exterior looks like over the primer. So this is a Strigoi Satan, I believe it's pronounced, probably wrong. And so now I'm going to apply a lighter pure white paint just on the very highlights to give it that pseudo Xenophel highlight that you could get, replicate with your rattle cans and airbrush. So I'm just going to aim for the tips of its teeth, the top of its head, just along the ridges get some of the spines and some of the more raised areas like here on the leg, along the back, there you go on the shoulder blade by there and then let's get some on its arms and forearms. Uh, this tail is very exposed so I will just get the top of the tail and leave the bottom fins alone again to just create a bit more depth. You go along the shoulder blades, again it's pulled by here on the shoulder but then that's more than fine. We can you can work with that later. So this is just all about getting some texture, getting those highlighted areas. Uh, you can see here. So this area I haven't put much of the spaceship gray. So this is just a flat primer. So I'm just going to go over now just to give it that contrast. And here we have some nice, nice fleshy bit of the tail. And we're just going to hit the top of the ridge, like so. And then maybe get some of these little barnacle pustule bits. There we go. And then that's that. So it will it will pop a bit more after it's dried, but I think I'm more than happy to go on to the full painting process now that this, air, this uh, process is complete. So let's have a look. So here we have the primed spaceship exterior and fully done model. So again, I'll bring this up. 